We're going to consider that gospel lesson today, but instead of rereading all of the words, let's hear Christ's responses to the temptations of the evil one. Jesus answered him, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone. Jesus answered him, It is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. Jesus answered him, It is said, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. It sounds a lot like a riddle, but it's not. When is the word more than just a word? When are words more than marks on a paper or sounds on the air? The word is more than the word. When the word is God's Son, the word made flesh, God himself come down as a man using truth and power to defeat our worst enemy and that's when the word is more than a word the word of God was the weapon in the hand of the word himself the victorious bearer Jesus Christ now the whole thing the whole setup for today is a marvel it's amazing it's it's almost astounding the holy son of God so much loved us that he left that beautiful perfect place we call it heaven right nothing wrong no sickness nothing at all to ever distract us from God and what did Jesus do he left it he came down and took a human body he entered this sinful ugly darkened world to battle for the souls of fallen humanity. Think about it. Adam and Eve lived in a beautiful garden, the most wonderful, perfect place when they were deceived and, and destroyed by the devil. But where did Jesus go to? Out into the howling wilderness where there was no convenience, no convenient stores, nothing but him and God and then the devil showing up. So, the Spirit led him out there so that he might confront the lying, murdering spirit who was cast down from God's presence. Really, that's exactly what the devil is. Satan powerfully attacked humanity, and now he who had pillaged humanity and the good creation of God, he said, ah, I got it made. My enemy, the one who is bigger than me, he just lowered himself. He entered the place where I am the big dog, where I rule. And now I can get him. See, Satan was cast out of heaven. He can't defeat God. He's on his way to hell. But he's a sore loser. He wants to drag people down with him. And, and she said, I can do that. I know I can do that. I got Adam and Eve, and everybody since then has given it a temptation. Everyone else is under my thumb, under my control. I can lead them around by their nose. And so he tried it with Jesus. What did he do? Well, he looked at the, the facts as they were. Jesus had gone without food for 40 days and 40 nights. Can be done. People have actually lived even a little longer than that. But boy, was he hungry. His body had been neglected. His body was crying for, for calories, for sustenance. And Satan says, hey, if you're the Son of God, you got to prove it to me. And he said, but if you are, it's obvious the Father isn't taking care of you. It's obvious you're hungry. You should be the one that takes care of your own body. If you don't, who will? make those stones into bread then then you'll have what you need then you'll show you're in charge and you're okay uh, only problem was that was putting physical needs before God so Jesus said it is written man does not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds in the mouth of God no we are more than just eating organisms we're not just animals we're not just calorie consumers you and I are creatures made in the image of God we were made with souls that were to reflect him to rejoice in him to be connected with him God first God last 
God above all, who gives us what we need, gives our bodies and souls fullness and blessing. Satan said, well, that didn't work. Let's try again. You know, Jesus, if you came here to save people, boy, that's commendable. That's nice. I'm glad you're here to save people. But you know what? He said, I already got them. They follow me. Everybody on this world is a sinner. Everybody follows my temptations. They give in to me. I, I rule the roost here. I'm the one I'm the one that can give you these people. Let's do it the easy way. I'll, I'll hand them over to you. If you do just one thing, just bow down and worship me, you know, and then you can have everything. Go back to heaven, fine and dandy. What a lie. Number one, the devil does not rule everything. He's fooled a lot of people, but he's not in charge. The devil is defeated. He's on his way down, and he just is stalling for time. And Jesus answered him, it is written. In that same book, Deuteronomy, it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. Satan, you're a creature. There was a time when there was no you, and you will be in the flames of hell why should I give you the glory, the honor, the, the obedience only the maker of all things deserves? You're nothing, Satan. Compared to God, you're not even a has-been. You're a, a, too bad you ever were. Well, Satan, at this point, not willing to admit defeat, says, oh, you like to quote the Bible? Good, I know the Bible. And here's the sad thing. He does know the Bible. He knows it better than you and I. He just doesn't believe it. And he twists it. And he pulls verses out. And as a matter of fact, he left a crucial verse out when he quoted what we read earlier from Psalm 91. Hey, Jesus, jump off of this high point of the temple. Because it says in Psalm 91, God will give his angels charge concerning you. You won't even, you won't even stub your toe on a rock. And Jesus said... It is written, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Because why? Who tests who? The greater tests the inferior, right? Who gives the test in the classroom? The teacher, not the student. Who gives the test at the hospital? The doctor, not the patient. Who is the one who's in charge? God, not we people we have no right to say, God, my way or the highway. We have no right to say, do it my way or you're not God. Oh no, our ways too often are sinful ways. So we want God's holy ways. As the real verse says, he will give his angels charge over you to guard you in all your ways. The ways of obedience, the ways of trust, the ways of following the Savior. That's what the Word of God is points us to. And that brings us to the application of this part of Scripture. Because we know that Jesus defeated the devil there in the wilderness, and the devil had to go away. And he tried again, oh not directly, not quite so boldly, he would have people like the Pharisees and Sadducees say, show us a trick, show us a miracle. The people would say, feed us some more, be our bread king. And even Peter would say, oh no, don't go to that cross. That was all the devil through those people trying to stop Jesus. But Jesus would not be stopped. Victorious, he went to the cross to give us life. No one took his life as he said. He laid it down to give us life. His blood shed on the cross forgives us, takes our sins away, makes us right with God again, and gives us the desire and the strength and the will to follow him. Because before he was crucified, Jesus, heading to the cross, said to his disciples, says in his word to all of us, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. What he's saying is, the way I follow the Father, I want you to come follow too. I want you not to put your bodies first, our appetites, our desires, more guns, more tools, more trips, more kids, more cars, whatever it is our bodies think would make us happy. Jesus says those won't make you happy. Only God blesses eternally. And, and not going the way of the world, not saying, I'll get popularity if I, if I follow the crowd. 
where Jesus said, come follow me. And, and finally letting God be God. Coming to him in real repentance. Coming to him and saying, Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner. And God said, that's been my desire for you all along. I've always wanted to save you. I've always wanted to free you from sin. I've always wanted to restore you to wholeness and spiritual wellness through my son, Jesus Christ. The word, Jesus Christ, was victorious over the devil with the use of the word to remind us that when temptation arises, and it arises in this building, it arises in the parking lot and every place we go, we too can use God's victorious word. Because when we speak that word of God, the devil can't stand against us. The devil has to admit that Christ is stronger and we won't be lost. So, Christ won. The word was victorious for us. May he also continue to be victorious in us as we live by his word. In Jesus' name, amen. And now may the peace of God that surpasses all human understanding keep your hearts and your minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen.